Welcome back to another part on the Pan European. It's quite late here, so excuse me being quiet. But um, last time we looked at the brake master cylinder. This time we're going to look at the front end of the bike. Um, the brake master cylinder. I'm still waiting for parts because, as you can see, the bike's the other way around now, so it normally sits here. The seal kits changed quite a bit between different model years and ABS or not, and I've been struggling to um, get the right one. What I will show you though is that. Um, this came up really nicely in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I figured while I'm waiting for those parts to come in, why don't we try and get the forks off and um, see if we can deal with all this rot up here and these horrifically stuck brakes. So all I've done is taken the two bolts out here that hold all the balancing blocks and their compensators on, I've taken out the upper and lower brake pins for this side. The other side has already been taken out by the previous owner, so we'll have to find some replacements for those. Um, that was a, a honestly nerve-wracking because it looks like plenty of mechanic has beaten it up before and it was squeaky tight but now that's all off um i'm gonna see if i can drop this all out to get the mud guard off normally you'd take this off first but um one of the bolts snapped and the other one has had some um love in the past and because it's so close to this cross brace up here the bottom of the fork tree you can't get anything in there above it to drill it out, so it's probably easier just to drop the whole lot and take care of that afterwards. So I've just undone these pinch bolts. The next thing I'm going to do is drop the plate out of the lift, try and uh, drop this front wheel off, and then it should be as simple as loosening up. Uh, there's a <laughs> bolt on the other end of this on that side. Loosening that up and dropping the forks out, and then we'll deal with the tree and the bars and everything separately. And hopefully once we've got those out and on the floor, or at least away from this, we'll be able to get in down from the top and take care of that. So I'll be back in a moment. So a quick tip on an ABS equipped bike that I've just discovered is um, up here is where the ABS sensor lives. If you don't take this off, it sticks out too far into the path of the wheel for you to drop the wheel out. Luckily I noticed very quickly, but if you didn't see that you might damage it and these are getting hard to find. So uh, yeah, now we've done that, we should just be able to pull this wheel out. Don't have my tripod set up, so I'll bring you back when I've done it. Right, so the wheel is off, and as you can see, the Pan-European is in chopper mode. I just undid these here and here, and then up the top here, this one, and it's equivalent on the other side. And that's the forks out. We can uh, clean them up, change the seals, service them, um, and then we can also look at the brakes. But first of all, we can get that damn mud guard off, so... I think we need to do our, do need to answer a pressing question. What would a Pan European look like as an American chopper? Eh, not bad actually. So now you can see why that bolt's in the state it is, because this is all the crap caught between the mud yard. There's the one that snapped off. And there is the remnants of the one that I've just um encouraged. So someone having fireworks already. Calm down. I'm waking a bit to go yet. Right, so I think we'll uh, get all this plastic off and see what we're working with, because obviously now we've got to get these stubs of bolts out, either drill them out or uh, heat them and grab the ends, we'll find out. So quite helpfully, a load of the nuts that are doing these joiner plate here <clears throat> have been rounded out. It's the, um, it's the little hex-headed ones in the back here. There's absolutely nothing left, and the metal itself has then got corrosion in the open wounds and has turned to dust, so I want to get the stanchions out <clears throat> and really take a look at these lowers before I decide whether I'm going to fight all that hardware out only to have to find and replace it or whether um, buying a different set of forks if they're cheap enough and there's no point in me buying a five quid bolt here a two quid bolt there if the whole lot forks included in much closer to roadworthy conditions is going to cost me 30 40 quid so <clears throat> first of all I want to get these out quick tip if you've taken these out like I have and forgotten to loosen these top nuts, just pop them back in, do this up, it'll only need one, and then you can crack those top nuts off. Really, you should do it before you um, before you take the forks all the way out of the bike, but uh, no matter how many times you do it and forget, you never learn. The other thing is I do have a spare yoke over there which I could screw them into, but um, as I think I mentioned in the previous clip, my vice ripped itself off the bench and I haven't gotten around to fixing that yet, so i got nothing to hold it in anyway, so we'll take those off and then uh, get these forks apart. 
It's at this point, if you've never worked on motorcycle forks before, that you're going to find out that um, fork oil smells disgusting when it's been sat for a long time in some rotten old forks like this. I think it smells like mouldy dog food, really bad corned beef mixed with gearbox oil. So there's a lovely mental picture for you. I'm going to leave these upside down like that overnight to drain out. Um, and then we'll take the bolts out the bottom of them and pull the guts out uh, another day. For you, that'll be in a minute. For me, that'll be another day. All right, I'm back again. And uh, all I've done is pop the two bolts out the bottom here. And that's allowed me to pull this damper rod assembly out. The spring is captive on here, so what you have to do is get a spanner on this, which allows you to unscrew this, which is normally on the top of it. Underneath that, you've got a washer here with a slot in it. You've got to pull the spring down, which you can easily do by hand, pull the washer out, and then the spring will pop up, and then you can take it off. And then pump this damper rod over a container, and it will gob out all of this nasty looking. You see the darker parts of that oil? It will gob that all out, um, and then that's your uh, damper rod out and drained. Now we can go about getting these forks apart. If you want to see how to do that on a much smaller scale, there's a lot less violent, go back and look. There's a video on the SR125, the Grand Challenge bike, where I show how to rebuild forks. Um, I won't cover it again here, but basically you've got to smash them out, inspect them, check the bushings, put them back together, and use a fork seal driver to knock the forks down. The Haynes manual is pretty clear on this, and like I say, my other video will show you how to do it too. So I'm going to go and do that and get covered in this disgusting smelling fork oil. And so just like that, the best part of a week has passed. And honestly, I don't think I ever want to talk about this fork job again. They've been a part of it. All the seals replaced. They've been cleaned up, flushed out with brake clean. All the bolts and washers are replaced. Loctited back, just the way the Haynes manual says. The seals are in, and I've even auto-sold the stanchions, which have come up well. They look new enough. But holy crikey. I had them locked in up here, and using the slide hammer method to bang them down to get the seals out. It took me a week, so it's a week later, um, because it looked like they'd been sat in a place where condensation had formed on the stanchions and dripped down, and not only the seals themselves were stuck but the um the bushings were doing that thing where they get up under each other and part so i had to slam them enough to remove 50 percent of the teflon coating and then when those came free the washers and the circlips and everything had rusted into lumps and were stuck in the top so yeah six days with a propane torch of slamming the life out of those to try and get the things apart let's never talk about it again <laughs> Next thing I'm going to do is take this apart and um, get all these lines off because I have a new lower um, fork yoke because you can see this one's a bit cruddy and crusty. It's on the shelf over there, it's already been repainted. So let's get this one off and that one on. Right, I might end the video here, I might not, depends. i um, done a couple of bits, put this bridge piece back on started bolting the brakes back onto the bike these are the old calipers i've got some new ones because a rebuild kit cost as much as a set in good condition with relatively new pads in them got the balancing and combined braking system cylinders mounted back up just spent 20 minutes fighting with this to get the copper there's a copper bush in here that's oil impregnated rather than a bearing and that was stuck solid so took that apart freed it gave it a bit of love with a, a grinding stone and then put some copper grease in it so that's all good. Um, started clipping and looming the wiring back up. Up top here, while I had this off, I put the new um, ignition barrel in that I think I showed in one of the first videos. It's one of the things that was in the box with the bike because it looks like someone's tried to steal it before and the one that was in there looked like that. So snip that out, put the new one in. Um, and this one has a connector on the end. The previous one had been chalky blocked by someone so we'll see what we can do to sort that out the next task once i've got all of these brakes back on again and got this sort of roughly set is going to be change the calipers so once i've got this bit on i've changed the calipers um, and then 
The other thing I did, which I didn't show on camera, because I've been quite busy, not had much time to work on this bike, so getting everything done now is drilled out and tapped those holes that the mudguard uses to mount, um, and then just also thrown the ABS sensor back in place roughly. It's starting to look a bit more like a motorbike now. Um, the idea being that I want it rolling again so that I can get the front all bolted down to torque and also the back. We never did these bolts up properly to torque and align the back. So I want to do that and hopefully at that point it will be rolling. And once it's rolling, we can start paying attention to uh, getting the brakes back together, rebuilding that rear master cylinder, bleeding them, checking that they work, and seeing what the story with the ABS is. Um, and once we've done that, we're nearly a rideable bike. So that's probably going to be it for this part. If it's not, there'll be some video after this. If it is, I'll see you next time. Sorry for the long delay. Hope to get moving with this because... I've got some other fun things to be doing um, and I want the bench space so hopefully see you again not too long a time.